taking advantage of this year's Independence Day celebrations, demonstrators in New Delhi called for a ban on child labor. The Indian government says only 18 million children are affected. Campaigners say the real figure is far higher, 90% of them so-called untouchables, laboring in tiny workshops, like this. These youngsters risk burns and silicosis, a disease which eventually suffocates. The heat and dust are reckoned to reduce life expectancy by one third. Indian law forbids the employment of children in hazardous jobs, but no employer has ever been successfully prosecuted for breaking. The carpet industry is a major employer of children. Their nimble fingers are said to equip them better than adults for the work, which makes them liable to poisoning from colouring agents and to lung diseases from fibre dust. Some are runaways from home, but many are sent to work by their parents as the only way the families can survive. They're paid a pittance, have no security, and are often beaten and abused. Campaigners say the idea that it's the inevitable result of poverty is wrong. It's cheap child labor, they say, that makes and keeps families poor. Rag picking is an industry that employs millions of children in and around India's major cities and towns. It exposes them to many diseases and frequent abuse. Voluntary organizations try to help, but most want to impose programs that children find irrelevant. Among Delhi's Motiya Khan shanties, a notable exception, the Jagriti School. The foundress, Shabnam Ramaswamy, set it up for slum children she calls India's street survivors. She was one herself once, and is now convinced that education alone will enable these youngsters to escape the cycle of family poverty in which only the children can find work. Ramaswamy has no grand notions about liberating children or rescuing them from the need to work. But she believes even rudimentary schooling gives working children more confidence and shows them how to deal with their problems. Eventually, that way, she believes, child labor may be eradicated. Ramaswamy is a firm believer in showing children how to handle real-life situations and uses drama classes with this in mind. She fiercely denies that her approach, accepting child labor as a fact of life, legitimizes it. I don't believe in this until and unless I can do something about their day-to-day -day running. How can I say, okay, liberate? So for me, a support system is more meaningful in their lives. I help them in nutrition, I help them in education, I help them in the daily survival when the police picks them up, you see? Then, after doing all this, if I can do something about them, earning their daily bread, then only I can say I'll liber liberate you. These shoeshine boys working at Delhi bus station are being helped by the Butterfly Organization. It too believes that child labor is a fact of life that must be accepted and tries to teach the children how to organize themselves. Butterfly has even set up a restaurant and trained some of the street boys to prepare the food, keep the premises clean and manage it themselves. It also provides the boys with good meals cheap. Butterfly won publicity this year for campaigning to unionize these children. The government rejected their application, quoting a law saying under-15s can't join trade unions. The children appealed, arguing they needed to, to prevent exploitation by unscrupulous employers. The Supreme Court admitted their appeal. Butterfly's founder says the children still need her organization's help. The kind of jobs that they are involved with is, is an ad hoc thing. Like, uh, if they get a... Um, um, Wages today, they may not get wages tomorrow because they work as porters, they work as shoe shiners, and they work as rack pickers. So it is a very erratic uh, working uh, situation that they are in. Whereas here, what happens is that when they come here, they get trained as well as they get a stipend for it, and uh, everything is looked after, right from the meals to their health care and their education. 12 year old Ala Uddin, a rag picker attends Butterfly's classes at a convent school. If he gave up work to study, he says, what would happen to his home? 12-year-old Anna is a rag picker also. She says her parents send her to work because they have no money. Who'd feed them, she asks. Who'd feed her? Anna's parents don't work, she says, adding that her mother has TB. 18-year-old Dulal is another rag picker. His family's in Bengal, but he quarreled with his parents when he was very young and came to Delhi. He's lived in the slum ever since. 
The men on this truck are two of India's five million bonded laborers. They, or their parents or grandparents, sometimes it goes back eight generations, borrowed from an employer who paid negligible wages and charged impossibly high rates of interest. With no education and no chance of getting any, they and their children are trapped from birth to death. Campaigners say they're slaves. These men were bonded until they were freed by the man they greet. Swami Agni Vesh of the Bonded Labour Liberation Front is a former Indian government minister and a leading opponent of the present government. He campaigns vigorously for an end to all child labour and rejects the Jagriti school and butterfly approach to the problem. We are very apprehensive about this suggestion because we have our legitimate fears that once we accept this type of suggestion, the, the whole system will be very happy and the whole problem of child servitude gets some legitimacy and it gets regularized. So we are very forthright and we stand for total abolition of all child labor, not only in hazardous industries but everywhere. The overriding need for children of bonded parents and other laboring children to be educated is one point on which Agnivesh entirely agrees with Ramaswamy and Butterflies. He's a leader of the India-wide campaign calling on the government to make free education a statutory right for all children up to the age of 14. Close to Delhi's famous Red Fort, homeless men, women and children sleep on the streets. Campaigners say the child labor system is largely responsible for their poverty. They say that there are as many adults unemployed, 55 million, as there are child laborers. And they say the figures increase in Tamil. The problem is not confined to India. International campaigners say it's elsewhere in Asia, Latin America, Africa, and parts of Europe. But it's worse than India. And its opponents there want to see effective steps to eradicate it in place by the year 2000.